Tony Hendrick with Painting Spirit and today's subject is going to be perception and perception is a big part of creating art you're always dealing with perceptions whether it's your own perception or other people's we all deal with perception really and I wanted to talk today about how that can be utilized in your artwork so I'm starting out with something that might already look familiar to many people driving to work every morning uh, got this view that you have every morning and after a while that view can get kind of boring so one of the ways that artists play around with perception is to change it a little bit and this is actually something talked about with modern art that modern art took our way of perceiving the world this is the perspective that we're used to seeing our our line of sight is at the horizon and it's typically how we're viewing the world but if we change that perception And now we're looking up at the sky. With some dramatic crop clouds, maybe. And you've taken your eye off the road. Hopefully not. Looked up at the, the beautiful clouds. It can be awe-inspiring. And maybe those clouds have that same kind of dramatic effect where they're exploding into the sky paints really wet right now so I'm gonna have to glob on more paint to get the effect that I'm looking for so what I'm getting at is that a shift in perspective can create some life in your art. And what I was referring to just a minute ago about talk about modern art doing this with the canvas, it's, it's kind of a clamshell effect. So if you look at a lot of modern art, you'll get this effect where things are creating tension with the canvas kind of going the opposite of what we're usually looking at let's uh, I just saw a little bit of yellow going there let's get some going like that so 
So anyways, let's uh, talk about perception and creating tension in a painting. But we get trained into perceiving the world in certain ways. Thinking the world exists through a newspaper. So we're taught to read and learn about things that are going on in the world. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to go about talking about perception today. But similar to yesterday, um, perception can be used the same way time can be used in your painting to kind of break up the space, create life in your painting, exploring different ways of perceiving can do that. And we all have a unique way of perceiving. So let's say you grew up on an island And that island is somewhere near the equator. And you show that person who lives on this island in the equator who's never seen modern civilization, never seen a never seen a television. Their whole life has been spent on this island. And you show them this painting that I am creating which some of you already might know what I'm creating here. Maybe if you live in Texas, you, you know what I'm painting. Not necessarily if you live in in Michigan right now, as I just saw. My sister-in-law posted a picture of quite a bit of snow in Texas. Anyway, so I show that picture to this person on the island. They're not going to have a clue as to what that is. And <clears throat> that's because they've never been exposed to it, obviously. So they just don't have the brain cells to know what that is. And you could probably spend quite a bit of time describing what the heck a snowman is. And they might not get very far. So they just don't have the, the brain cells to understand what you're talking about. And we're actually all kind of doing that with each other right now. Somebody has information about something in their mind that maybe you don't have and your information seems to be much different. And the battle ensues. 
The reason the battle ensues is because we get so attached to what our particular perception is. And we don't realize exactly what we're doing, trying to defend something. But if we're not so attached to our particular perception, it can create some space that allows us to see somebody else's perspective. I remember taking a, a science class in college, and one of the discussions in the class was about art actually being more objective than science in the argument that was being used to provide evidence for this idea is that all science is really based on our ability to perceive. And if you look at a bat who perceives the world in a way that we just don't have any way of perceiving through their particular way of perceiving, we can have ideas about it, We understand radar, we actually use it, but to actually perceive reality the way the bat perceives reality, it's not possible for us to have that perception. Yet with art, I think Joseph Campbell talks about this that you can find cultures throughout the world who had never had contact with one another. Yet, if you look at the art those cultures are creating, there is common universal principles that are happening. Symbols being used. And so the point that this discussion was getting at is that maybe there's a more objective view of the world that happens when we get tapped into something beyond our own individual perceptions. And maybe that's what's happening with the artist who's zoning out, like I've been doing a little bit during this discussion. Let's see if I can wrap this painting up. It kind of got a little wild for me. See what happens here in just the last few strokes. Anyway, it's a it's a subject that's worth exploring is our perceptions. Whether we're perceiving facts or we're just perceiving thoughts that we have in our mind. But one thing that I feel is that we all have a unique perception of the world that has value. And we can express that through our art. And just like the bat, if you talk to any buddy who studies bats, they're going to be able to give you all kinds of reasons why the bat perceives the world 
far differently than we do provides a great benefit to all of us in creating balance in the world. So, go ahead and see what you can explore with your own unique perceptions in art. And until then, I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.